Cobb TV. Watch your life make sense. Music is uh, music amazingly connected to your soul. It's it's an amazing, it's a great expression of feeling. Um, it really, you can describe so much without words and just with, um, you know, a melody. And it's, you know, I mean, not many people can really describe how they feel connected. My name is Patrice Perry. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Toronto, Canada. And uh, my family's from the Caribbean. And now I live in New York City. Uh, when I was little, I wanted I wanted to be uh, I wanted to be an actress. Um, but then I also, you know, was studying music, so um, um, playing piano and singing um, was important to me. Um, you know, I grew up going to church, so my family's Christian. And um, you know, uh, you know, it was you know a little bit of life straight out of Jesus camp. Um, I mean, I could just, you know, recite verbatim whatever they taught me in Sunday school. So, you know, I'm on the bus, on the school bus with, you know, every other little kid. And, of course, I have to be good buddies with the, with the kid whose parents are atheists. And um, as much as <laughs> we were good buddies, that just wasn't going to work for me. So it was my job to tell her that, no, your parents can't be atheists because there is a God and there's Jesus. And if you don't believe that, then you're going to hell. Um, and so this is what I told my friend who then told her parents who then had to have a talk with my mom and my mom was like, okay, I appreciate your enthusiasm and that's all good and everything, but you can't really go around telling your friends they're going to go to hell. <laughs> and that, I guess, that was what gave me my outlook on life and, you know, the beyond and whatnot. Um, and, uh. So, you know, it was all about God and Jesus, and that was fine for a while. Like, you know, that gave me some sort of sense of um, comfort, um, you know, and, and hope and that kind of thing. It, it, it just kind of meant that, you know, there was sort of more for me after death. You know, like this wasn't the whole enchilada, that there was more to my life than what I could see because I was not content with the concept of that was it. I got a job in New York City um, working for a church, which is really funny because of all you know my pursuits that had really never been on the list of things and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go make a difference in the lives of the youth. And I guess sort of six months into it, um, I really kind of started a more intense search. I wanted more understanding, you know, I mean, you have this book that's a thousand pages that tells amazing tales of amazing things happening, and you're like, well, you know, okay, that happened then, it doesn't happen now, what's, what's different? How come, you know, you, people aren't just running around, you know, parting seas and <laughs> raising the dead and <laughs> healing people on the spot and stuff? Um, and there was always this sort of answer in the background of there's only so much that you could understand and that, you know, some things would just never be clear until you actually die and then you get the answers, which was not a good enough answer for me. And, you know, around that time, there was a certain sense that I'd found that there was there was a process that was sort of becoming clear to me of kind of highs and lows, ups and downs. And I was becoming afraid of being happy because I realized that the moment I was happy that everything would all go to hell. Even mild contentment, that's when something would come and smack you from behind and knock you down further than you could ever possibly imagine. And I was just really tired of that happening because I like being happy <laughs> and I wanted to stay there and no matter how hard I tried I couldn't and it didn't matter what I did it would just be things completely out of my control that I couldn't do anything about or change and I was just desperate to stop the cycle 
That's, that's what it was. I was desperate to stop the cycle. Boom, on Google, there was, you know, the website Kavala.info. It was a website with amazing amounts of information and it was all there and it was free. I was like, there's something to that. Because I also figured that if somebody really had real knowledge that they felt was important to share that people would have to know, they probably wouldn't charge me for it. Um, and so it was like, yo, here's our website. Here's everything we know. Enjoy, download, do whatever you want, peruse. So I immediately signed up for, you know, the online course. Um, one had just finished. I spent like the entire summer perusing the archives. I couldn't wait till the beginning of September. Remember the first class I sat down, I had my snacks, my juice, my water. I, so I wouldn't have to go move anywhere. I went to the bathroom and I sat down for an hour and a half and I didn't move. That was it. Um, it was entirely new to me. I mean, I, I came to understand why you know, these, my ups and downs existed, why I couldn't stay happy and why, you know, crap would always follow happy. <laughs> there was always happy than crap and happy than crap. Um, and in a very, you know, simple way, it was broken down for me, like clearly and so concretely. I mean, that was the thing that it was concrete. It was, it wasn't like vague. It wasn't sort of like, well, you know, you'll figure it out if you meditate hard enough. Um, it was like, well, this is what happens, this is why it happens, and this is what will happen after that. And, you know, and then it was so obvious outside of everything else that I had seen or heard or read. It was just, it was obvious. It was like a ton of bricks. It was like a lightning bolt. It was like, why didn't anybody tell me that before? <laughs> It was relief, really, that I know that I don't have to live that way anymore. Um, and that I don't have to be forever subject to, to the roller coaster that life has always been. You know, it, I really, everything wasn't just kind of left up in the air. Things weren't just left to chance. Um, and that there was, that I had some ability to affect um, my life. It's like, you know, when you understand what, what there is to fear or what there isn't to fear, I guess is sort of a, a big thing. I mean, knowing that I don't have to actually be afraid of the dark, there's no reason, there is nothing lurking in the shadows for me to have any concern about. That, um, that, that is really, really empowering to not go to bed at night and, and not be thinking about all the horrible things that, you know, that I can't see that can happen. You know, that was an interesting thing that I was, never really thought about the fear that was there, but when it was gone, it was like, oh, wow. You know, it's very different. And, you know, in a work environment where, you know, I mean, you sit there and you're listening to sermon after sermon, on you know, uh, you know, expounding on like the Old Testament and you know Exodus, and you're like, it, what you know, what's going on inside of me is just, it's 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 amazing because you know I'm remembering everything that I'm taught and I'm listening to what's being said and I'm knowing and knowing that not nothing that is read, not nothing that they're talking about that they're reading is actually describing anything physical. Um, you know, it's describing an inner world, your inner world, my inner world. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's not about, you know, marching in the desert quite literally. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's the wilderness that's inside you. Um, and, you know, I mean, I get a weekly reminder of that, you know, expounded in a completely different way. But there it is, time after time. It's great. I mean, like I said, it's trippy, but in a, in a really kind of cool way because, again, you really can't forget about, you know, you know, everything around me is inside me. Um, and that's something that you don't just kind of forget about.
Before my fear, you know, was the end of my happiness and the end of, you know, whatever pleasure. Um, and now that I'm, you know, working towards, you know, a life that has endless and abundant and self, you know, renewing pleasure um, and happiness in, in the spiritual pleasure, um, because that's what, you know, remains like that. There's, it's not going anywhere. Um, there's no end to that. And so that is probably the, the greatest thing that it could possibly have offered me because everything else, you know, it dies and you fall into depression and there it is, you know, I had my high and now it's over and I have to go find another one. But to have a, you know, a, a continuous, um, stream, um, sort of never ending happiness that is provided, you know, via the spiritual, um, it, you know, puts, you know, everything in great perspective. We get on the bus. Well, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be preaching. I would probably tell her that she doesn't have anything to worry about. And I'm, I'm not telling them that they, they're going to hell um, because I know that they're not. I'm not chasing the prize, you know, for on my deathbed. Um, and that's actually good to know. And it's good to know that, um, that the spiritual, the spirituality that I was searching for is not something I have to wait for, you know, dying. Um, and that actually, funny enough, is what I wanted to know, you know, because everything was all about, you know, well, you'll, you know, you know it when you die and you can know it while you live. And that is, I think, the hugest thing that has, you know, changed my perspective.